All right, had big plans to uh, show you all the Ragnar gear that you're gonna need to run a successful relay. 12 people, two vans, all the fun you could ever have. Everything you need, we were gonna show you outside, but due to Mother Nature not cooperating, we're gonna go to the studio. So let's go inside, show you all the gear you're gonna need to run a successful Ragnar relay. All right, Ragnar Relay, everything you need to run the Ragnar Relay. We're gonna break it down into three phases, what you need to run, what you need while you're in the van relaxing, and then some van essentials to make sure you're comfortable and you've got everything you need to do a 24-hour Ragnar Relay, you and 12 of your closest friends crammed into a van, how to make it fun, let's go through it. First up, how to run a Ragnar Relay. Well, it's a running race, so you're gonna need everything you need to run. And that is a kind of a no-brainer. You're gonna need your favorite shorts and shirts and socks and your favorite running shoes. I run on the Hoka's and those are my go-to shoes. You're gonna to wanna to record the event somehow, whether it's on the phone, on your belt, or your Apple Watch, or a Garmin device, or just a regular old Timex Casio to record the time. Either way, you're gonna to wanna to bring something, have it on your wrist and record the time. If you're gonna bring an Apple Watch, definitely bring a way to charge it because that thing's not gonna last the whole way, even the newest one. They're all about an 18 hour battery life and so you're gonna to wanna to wait, have a way to charge that while you're in the van. Other things during the daylight, it could be sunny, so sunscreen, lip balm, uh, a hat to keep the sun off of your face, maybe your favorite pair of blender sunglasses or whatever you happen to use, you're gonna to wanna to maybe, depending on the length of your legs, you might wanna have water with you, so you're gonna to wanna to bring a water bottle either to carry or have something that you clip on your race belt or some, some way to carry a little bit of water. Or this one's my Amphipod, this is a bigger one, there's like one single bottle, of, you know, it'll slosh, but it definitely secures to your back. Uh, and then there's a little tiny pack, a uh, little pocket in there for you to carry, maybe snacks or your ID. Uh, this one is by Nathan, so Nathan makes a lot of great products. Um, this one is going to have a way for you to carry uh, two bottles of water or some sort of electrolyte or some sort of goo or gel, whatever you put in there, and in a center pocket for your favorite snacks, an ID, or maybe even a small phone, maybe if you got an iPhone mini. Either way, that's how I would carry water with me on the course. If you want music while you're out there, it is discouraged by Ragnar, and really for safety reasons, um, you might not want to use it. However, if you're going to use it, make sure you can hear people around you, hear the race directions, uh, either to stop, go, or make a turn, whatever uh, they're trying to tell you. You definitely want to make sure you can hear it. Some of my ways that I would use this, probably uh, an Apple AirPods. That's my go-to. Um, and if I use these, I'm going to have these little hooks that I just found on Amazon that hook right onto it, and then they, they make sure the AirPods don't come out of your ear at all. These won't probably last all through the night, so you're gonna want a way to charge those as well. Another popular method of listening to music while not um, interfering with your hearing is these uh, aftershocks. Um, I've used those before, they're pretty good using bone conduction uh, technology, so those are pretty cool. Uh, other little things that I might have with me, this is a uh, road ID that you can go and get, uh, put all the information, all your emergency contact, medical information on there, wear it on your wrist, a first responder would then have your uh, mer medical and emergency contact information if for whatever reason they needed that. Little body glide, you might need that. That's again, personal preference. Up to you whether you bring it. You're gonna have a race number during the Ragnar Relay, so you can either pin it uh, on your outer garment. That's up to you. I prefer the race belt idea. Every company sort of makes one. This one's by Fuel Belt, and this just again, um, clips the uh, number to you and you put it on your waist and it's uh, easy to use. Nighttime. Nighttime is uh, going to happen. It's going to happen over that 24 hour period. And so the number one thing you're going to want to pick up for yourself just so you don't share. Uh, really, that's, that's gross. Um, you're going to want a race or not race, but a reflective vest. Any brand will work, but just something that's reflective and high visibility. So anytime it's from sunset to sunrise, you can be seen outside the van, whether you're running or not. You're so definitely pick yourself up one of those. You're gonna sweat in it, so just get your own. Also at night, you're gonna need a tail light. There's, you know, there's several, these are by Nathan. Uh, these are just super lightweight uh, clip on your hat, your back of your vest or your shirt. This is gonna make sure you're seen. These are some older, bigger ones that, uh, you know, just make sure you can be seen at night. So definitely gotta get one of those. Uh, and a headlamp. So you're gonna wanna have a headlamp. This one's by Black Diamond. Um, super bright, it can go flood or spot, whatever you prefer to run in. 
Uh, if you're going to need one, you're going to be down on some uh, country roads in the middle of the night, so you definitely want to have a way to see where you're going. And then the last thing, really optional, but a flashlight. Um, you might want a flashlight. Uh, I know when I did a Ragnar Trail, I used the uh, headlamp in sort of a flood mode, and then I used the flashlight to kind of pick out uh, obstacles, rocks, fruits, etc. on the road in the middle of the night. Maybe not, maybe don't need that, but might. So that's the running. Everything you need for running. Let's talk about everything you're going to want to have in the van, getting comfy and relaxing in between your legs. Let's get to that. Okay, when you're not running, let's get comfy. First off, you're going to want dry clothes. Uh, so change out of the stinky running clothes, put them in a Ziploc bag. And I've also read you could put a dryer sheet in there uh, with your stinky clothes. Maybe it won't stink so bad when you get them up. But either way, get a way to seal up those stinky clothes. And again, bring three pairs of running clothes so you don't have to get recycle anything. But put them in a Ziploc bag and then you'll be good to go. Put on dry clothes. Again, you could bring three sets of dry clothes. Uh, that's all, again, personal preference. I would definitely dress for the conditions. You might want a hoodie, a rain jacket, a uh, puffy jacket, or uh, some warm-up pants, or sweatpants, or whatever you're gonna wear, but get dry, get comfortable. I would recommend flip-flops because just get out of socks and shoes, let your feet maybe not breathe, but let them relax a little bit before you put some running shoes on and do another leg. So get comfy in the van. Some other things you're gonna wanna do is bring is first of all, a big towel. First of all, to dry off if you need to, but you can also put it around yourself while you change. You're gonna be in close quarters, six of you in a van, so have a way to protect yourself or to at least, you know, a little modesty there. This is a spy belt. Didn't mention this in the running phase, but something that I would run with for sure. And that is only because I'd like to have my phone with me if I'm in the middle of nowhere and I need to contact somebody or if I get a little lost. It's happened where you people have veered off course. The course is gonna be very well marked, but it could be in the middle of the night, you could be tired, could be fatigued, could be off course, and all of a sudden find yourself in a place that you might want to communicate. So having your phone with you is a really good idea. When you're changing and putting all your stinky clothes in your Ziploc, some sort of body wipe, some way to just clean yourself up and some deodorant so you're not whiffing out the whole car. Other first aid things you might want to have really in the van or in your bag, just things, you know, maybe it's just a roll of tape in case you have an ankle issue, want to tighten something up, some KT tape. Again, links in the description for most of the stuff that I'm going to carry with me. Um, some Luca tape. Uh, Luca tape, although this is a really ugly and, and abused roll of Luca tape, the Luca tape is good for putting over uh, hot spots on your feet if for whatever reason, but really you've been running in running shoes, so hopefully that's not an issue, but for anybody who needs it. Trail toes is something I've used before just to get everything uh, lubed up on your feet so that if you have any hot spots, again, those are emergency use only. You shouldn't have any issue. You probably have been training for this and running all day long. Like I mentioned earlier in the running phase, you're going to want to charge things, whether it's the phone or your Apple Watch or whatever it is. So definitely a power bank, something that you can plug stuff into and charge in the van and not be relied on the van power. You might not be in the front seat where you can plug stuff in. So definitely some sort of power bank, some way to charge your device. So at some point during the night, you're gonna be able to stop someplace and sleep. It might be in between legs and then, and you're not driving, so you can just curl up in the back, or you could be uh, pulled off at a spot where that's a designated sleeping area. Sometimes there are high school gyms, some place that's a designated place for you to sleep. So you're gonna to wanna to get comfy. Some things that I would bring, first of all, I'm a big fan of just a very lightweight inflatable pillow. I've used this in the van. Um, I, can, I can sleep really anywhere with this inflatable pillow. So this one's by Sea to Summit. It's their Eros uh, Premium. Again, link in the description. This is my favorite thing ever, the Eros Pillow. I'll definitely have this with me wherever I go. You could, if you were gonna be in a gym, you might wanna bring your, you know, if you've got a backpacking, this is a Nemo camp mat that I would use to sleep backpacking. I'm not sure how this will make the cut. As I put everything in my bag to pack, I'm not sure that'll make the cut. Um, you could bring a sleeping bag. Definitely wanna have some sort of way to uh, curl up and get cozy in the van. Uh, this is uh, my, you know, just a lightweight backpacking sleeping bag that I can just throw in anywhere. I'll definitely probably bring this. An alternative to the sleeping bag is um, we have one of these rumple puffy blankets. So big fan of these. These are super comfy and cheaper than to get, go out and get yourself one of these big sleeping bags. Not gonna be as comfortable, uh, maybe because you're not in a bag, but in the van, you'll, that's all you'll need is something puffy to keep you warm. But then again, maybe if you're uh, in the south and it's really hot, 
you won't need any of that, so maybe just your lightweight towel. Hydration is going to be key. Definitely going to bring probably a Yeti water bottle or someplace to keep things cold. And then my, uh, just a Nalgene, Nalgene, whatever, however you say it. Uh, just another a water bottle for you to continue to stay hydrated while you're in between legs, along with any sort of snacks. That's personal preference. I'm not going to get into snacks. You can use whatever you use on a daily basis or on running races to keep yourself, uh, you know, hydrated, electrolyte filled up and ready to run the next leg. That's uh, running and relaxing. Now let's talk about a couple of key things for the van that make uh, will make it maybe more comfortable for you, if you're, especially if you're the driver. So let's talk about the driver things. First of all, you're gonna wanna charge that phone up that you're using to navigate to all the stops. So definitely bring a plug to uh, charge not only your device, but multiple devices. Everyone will gonna need, need, is gonna need a way to charge up their phones while they're in there. So definitely be a hero, bring this. I'm sure whatever van you're renting will have the ability to charge one or two, but you can uh, increase the capabilities by bringing something. This is just a one off of Amazon from Anchor that I got that works really good, charges two things at once. So I'm a big hero when it comes to that. I might also bring a little uh, vent magnet, um, a magnetic vent mount. Um, again, I'll link in the description the one I use. Bring it with me so that I can have my phone um, easily accessible when we're driving around. We're gonna probably stop at a convenience store and get a big styrofoam cooler and fill it with ice. Keep some cold drinks in there, uh, maybe some bottles of water. Probably going with the gallon since I expect everyone else to have some sort of portable water bottle with them. We're just gonna get big gallons and that's what we've used in the past or two and a half gallons just to fill up water as you go. And then really anything to make the van cooler. So I just picked up some window markers. Uh, that'll just dry off so we can just actually put you know decorate the van with whatever you want um, so that you can be cool on the course and make it make it stand out maybe some magnets or some streamers some led lights whatever you want to go crazy um, everyone does on the course so just definitely uh, set yourself up for success by getting that ahead of time so you're not trying to rummage through a uh, walmart or target on the course to uh, you know keep pace with everybody else so all right, that's everything you're going to need for our Ragnar Relay. Hope you can find most of this stuff in your house. If not, uh, links in the description for uh, all this stuff on Amazon. So give yourself a couple of days lead time to get it delivered to you so you can pack it all up. And when, you're all, when you've got all this stuff, what do you do with it? Well, you're going to need something to carry with you. This is my GORUCK GR3, and that's what I'm carrying all my stuff in. Uh, this probably in a GORUCK kit bag. And I got another video coming up soon that's going to describe all these things uh, on how I pack for different trips. But the GR3, their biggest bag, is probably what's going to carry all these things just because I've got sleeping bags and towels and big items and so i'm gonna go big go gr3 in a kit bag as i travel through the airport with all my stuff so hopefully you uh this video is helpful pack for a ragnar and hopefully my team uh gets access to this before the race so they can see what they need to take with them and we're all prepared if you like this video give it a thumbs up that helps it be seen by other people that are preparing for a ragnar relay subscribe to the channel so you can see what's coming up next and let's, uh, well, it's rainy here, so I can't really get outside. That's why I'm inside. I like to do these outside, but we're uh, sheltering from the rain. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Get outside.